The safety recall detailed in this program involves all 1983 through 1987 Alliance and Encore models. Included are 1983 to 1986 vehicles equipped with a 1.4 liter engine, 1985 and 1986 vehicles equipped with a 1.7 liter engine, and 1987 vehicles equipped with all engines. On these vehicles, an end cap on the heater core may fail, allowing hot coolant and steam to be released in the passenger compartment of the vehicle. To correct this condition, a redesigned heater core must be installed on all affected vehicles. Also, all of the 1985 to 1987 vehicles must be inspected to ensure that the coolant bottle is equipped with the proper high-domed black coolant bottle cap. Owners will be notified of this recall in several stages as sufficient parts for each stage are available. A quantity of heater core recall parts packages, part number C3940476, will be distributed initially and billed to all Jeep Eagle dealers. This package is used on 1983 through 1986 1.4 liter engine vehicles involved in stages one, two, and three. Additional parts for these stages, as well as for other models and engines involved in stage four, must be ordered to support customer demand as the stages are implemented. To service 1985 and 1986 vehicles equipped with a 1.7 liter engine, use part number C3940490. To service 1987 vehicles with all engines, use part number C3940496. You should be aware that some components and other assemblies unrelated to this recall have been removed during various steps of this procedure to provide better visual access for demonstration purposes only. To begin the service procedure, first with the ignition in the off position, disconnect the negative battery cable. Next, clamp both heater hoses near the bulkhead heater core attachments to reduce the loss of coolant and cut both heater hoses off at the end of the heater core nipples. Next, remove and discard the bulkhead retainer plate attaching screws and remove and save the metal retainer plate for reuse. Using approximately 15 PSI of shop air pressure, blow the coolant out of the heater core through the nipples. Next, the center console must be moved rearward. To do this, first remove the console attaching screws located on both sides of the front lower part of the console. Next, remove the automatic transmission shift bezel by first snapping out the plastic trim piece. Use care when removing the shift indicator mylar strip to avoid tearing or kinking the strip. For manual transmissions, remove the boot. Now remove the two screws located under the bezel or boot at the rear of the console. For 1983 through 1985 models, remove the two screws from the top of the console by the clock and snap off the overlay bezel. The removal of the radio attaching nuts may also be necessary on some models. Next, remove the clock and package tray from the console. Now, remove the two speed nuts that retain the console at the top to the instrument panel. For 1986 and 1987 models, clips are used instead of nuts. Also, remove the four screws that attach the heater controls to the console. This will allow the console to be moved rearward without damaging the heater cables. For 1986 and 1987 models, Snap off the heater control cover bezel and remove the two attaching screws.
Then pull the console free from the instrument panel clips. Next, on all models, pull the console as far rearward as possible between the front seats. It will not be necessary to remove any electrical connections. The next part of this procedure involves removing the brake pedal and detaching the clutch pedal if so equipped. To do this, first remove the stop lamp switch trim cover. Next, remove and discard the retaining clip from each side of the brake pedal or brake clutch pedal pivot pin. Now, remove and discard the cotter key from the end of the master cylinder pushrod pin. Then remove and save the pin and the pushrod plastic side bushing. For vehicles with automatic transmissions, slide the brake pedal pivot pin outboard and remove it from the mounting bracket as shown here. For vehicles with manual transmissions, slide the pivot pin and clutch pedal assembly outboard out of the mounting bracket, but do not remove the pin from the clutch pedal. If the pin is removed, the clutch adjuster mechanism must be reassembled. After freeing the clutch pedal, set it out of the way on the floor, then remove the brake pedal. Next, the steering column must be removed. Some steps may be different depending on whether the vehicle is equipped with a standard non-tilt column or a tilt column. Unique steps will be noted throughout this portion of the procedure. For all columns, first remove the steering wheel trim cover. Now turn the ignition switch to the on position. Next, remove the steering wheel attaching nut and mark the steering wheel to shaft location to ensure proper alignment of the steering wheel during reinstallation. Then remove the steering wheel from the splined shaft. For standard columns, remove the screws retaining the lower steering column trim cover as shown here. Next, disconnect the dash light rheostat electrical connector the cruise control command switch wire harness if equipped, and any other electrical connectors from the lower steering column trim panel. Now, remove the two screws attaching the turn signal and headlight switch, and move the switch outboard to allow clearance for removal of the steering shaft retaining ring. Removal of trim panels and electrical connectors from a tilt column are slightly different. For tilt columns, first place the column in the center position. Then unscrew and remove the tilt lever. Next, remove the upper and lower column housing covers from around the ignition switch. Also remove the upper rubber isolation gasket. Remove the two attaching screws from the turn signal stock. Now disconnect the electrical connectors from the upper trim panel and disconnect the two electrical connectors from the turn signal stock. To remove the remaining lower tilt column trim panel, remove the forward attaching screw and also remove the two upper attaching nuts through the access holes in the bottom rearward edge of the trim panel. Next, carefully remove the trim panel by working it out and around the ignition cylinder, and then disconnect the electrical connectors from the panel.
next for standard steering columns, remove the steering shaft retaining ring as seen here. Next, remove the left air conditioning duct by sliding it to the right to disengage it from the left side and remove it. Now remove the steering column intermediate shaft U-joint pinch bolt. The U-joint should be spread apart slightly for ease of removal and later reassembly. For vehicles with a standard column, be sure the ignition switch is in the on position to unlock the column, then replace the steering wheel and nut onto the shaft to assist in pulling the shaft free from the U-joint. Pull the shaft only far enough to disengage the U-joint. To remove the shaft from the U-joint on a tilt column, remove the three instrument panel to steering column attaching screws. Next, remove the four steering column mounting nuts and bolts. Now, pull the shaft column assembly only far enough to disengage the spline shaft from the U-joint. Next, on all vehicles, remove the accelerator pedal hold-down bolt from the bulkhead panel. Leave the cable attached and move the assembly away from the heater core. On 1983 and some 1984 automatic transmission vehicles, it is also necessary to remove the AC wide-open throttle cutout switch. To do this, drill out the two attaching rivets using a 1364 drill bit and remove the switch and mounting bracket and save them for reinstallation. Next, the heater core must be removed. To do this, cut the heater core nipples off with a hacksaw blade or similar tool. When doing this, cut the nipples flush with the heater core as shown here to assure there is enough room to remove the old core. After cutting, push the cut-off heater core nipples and bulkhead seal out into the engine compartment and discard them. Next, disconnect the heater core retaining clips, hold the steering shaft down on the floor, and pull the heater core to the left out of the heater housing. When removing the old core, be careful not to break the heater housing. Remove approximately one quarter inch of plastic from the front of the heater core box to allow clearance for the quick connects to engage the heater core nipples. Next, the new supplied heater core must be installed. To do this, insert the new heater core into the heater housing. Next, install and secure the retaining plate from the parts package to the heater box using the two supplied screws. The next part of this procedure applies to 1983 through 1986 vehicles with a 1.4 liter engine. On these vehicles, from the engine compartment, attach the two supplied quick connects to the heater core nipples. When doing this, ensure that the quick connects click into the fully engaged position. Pull on each quick connect after it is attached to ensure proper engagement. When installing the quick connects, the ends must face the right-hand passenger side of the vehicle in the engine compartment. Now install the supplied rubber bulkhead seal over the quick connects. Silicone lubricant will ease the installation. Also note that the seal will fit only one way. The quick connect hole nearest to the edge of the seal must be positioned at the bottom. 
After properly installing the bulkhead seal, reinstall the metal retainer plate over the rubber seal and attach it to the bulkhead using the screws provided in the parts package. Now cut off and remove only the formed bend section end of both heater hoses. Do not remove more than two inches from the end of either hose or they will be too short for installation. Next, place a supplied hose clamp over each hose and install the hoses onto the quick connects. Use silicone lube and smooth jawed pliers if necessary to assist in installation of the hoses to the quick connects. Support the quick connects to prevent excessive movement during installation of the hoses. After installing the hoses, torque the clamps to 10 inch pounds or one Newton meter. After installing the new heater core and proper hose quick connect configuration, use the two supplied pop rivets and reinstall the AC wide open throttle bracket and cutout switch if equipped. Now reinstall the accelerator pedal. Next, the steering column must be reassembled. Again, steps unique to either a standard or tilt column will be indicated in this section of the procedure. First on all columns, reattach the steering column upper shaft in the U-joint and start the pinch bolt, but do not tighten it. After doing this, ensure that the column boot has not been pulled out of position. If it is not properly installed and comes loose, it can interfere with the throttle pedal pivot mounts. For a standard steering wheel, use a seal driver to drive the upper steering shaft bushing in far enough to allow for installation of the steering shaft retaining ring and reinstall the steering shaft retaining ring. For a tilt wheel, position the steering column on the column mounting studs and reinstall the steering column mounting nuts and bolts. Torque the bolts to 18 foot-pounds or 24 newton meters. Then reinstall the steering column panel with the three attaching screws. Also for tilt columns, reconnect the electrical connectors. Reinstall the upper and lower trim panels, the turn signal stock, and the tilt lever. Next for both tilt and standard columns, properly align the steering wheel with the mark made on the shaft during disassembly. Reinstall the steering wheel nut and tighten the nut to 33 foot-pounds or 45 newton meters. Restake the steering wheel nut after tightening. For a standard column, adjust the fore and aft placement of the wheel and shaft so the wheel adequately clears the upper steering column trim cover. Next, tighten the steering shaft U-joint pinch bolt to 22 foot-pounds or 30 newton meters. Now reinstall the turn signal headlight switch. If equipped, next reconnect the cruise command wire harness connectors. Also reconnect the dash light rheostat switch electrical connectors and install the lower steering column trim cover. The next part of this procedure involves reinstalling the brake or brake and clutch pedal. To do this, reinstall the brake pedal or brake and clutch pedal and pivot pin in its mounting bracket and secure the pivot pin with the two supplied clips. 
be sure that the clips are seated in the grooves in the pivot pin. For proper assembly of the nylon spacers on the brake pedal for automatic transmissions, install the flat spacer to the inboard side and the shouldered spacer outboard as shown here. For brake and clutch pedal applications, install the flat spacer to the outboard side and the shouldered spacer to the inboard side as seen here. As mentioned earlier, do not remove the pin from the clutch pedal. However, if the clutch adjuster mechanism becomes disengaged from the pivot pin, assemble the clutch and install the pivot pin, then reattach the clutch cable. Now, reattach the master cylinder push rod to the brake pedal with the pin and nylon bushing. And use the supplied cotter pin to lock the push rod pivot pin in place. Next, reinstall the stoplight switch trim cover. Reinstall the left AC duct. Reinstall the steering wheel trim cover. Reposition the center console to its proper location. And install the attaching screws. Reinstall the shift indicator mylar strip and plastic shift lever trim. Or the rubber shift lever boot for manual transmissions. Working from the engine side of the bulkhead, use silicone sealer to seal the two pop rivets used to hold the AC wide open throttle bracket in position. Next, reattach the negative battery cable. Now top off the cooling system following the procedure outlined in the appropriate service manual. Next, check the function of all electrical components that were disconnected during the service procedure and reset the clock if equipped. Finally, start the vehicle and check the heater for proper operation and check the cooling system connections for leaks to complete this recall service procedure. At this point, it's important to note that the installation of the heater hoses and quick connects will be slightly different on 1985 and 1986 vehicles equipped with a 1.7 liter engine. On these vehicles, use the heater core hose and quick connect recall parts package, part number C3940490. Using these parts, install the supplied 90 degree quick connect on the bottom inlet heater core nipple and the straight quick connect on the top outlet heater core nipple as shown here. The supplied rubber bulkhead seal grommet and retainer plate are also installed over the quick connects with the supplied screws. Once again, it's important to emphasize that the quick connects must fully click engage both heater core nipples. Like the procedures demonstrated on the 1.4 liter engine, the formed end of the existing lower heater hose must be cut off and the shortened hose must be connected to the bottom 90 degree quick connect as shown here. Also on these vehicles you must remove the short piece of heater hose from the T going to the radiator and replace it with the short hose and hose clamps from the parts package. For 1987 vehicles with all engines Use the heater core hose and quick connect parts package, part number C3940496. Use this parts package to install the 90 degree quick connect on the bottom heater core inlet nipple and the straight quick connect on the top outlet nipple of the heater core. Also install the supplied rubber bulkhead seal 
and retainer plate over the quick connects with the supplied screws. Again, when installing the quick connects, pull on them to ensure they are fully engaged on the heater core nipples. Next on vehicles with 1.7 and 2 liter engines, remove the formed hose attached to the intake manifold nipple and discard the hose. Replace it with a new formed hose from the parts package and connect the new hose between the intake manifold nipple and the bottom 90 degree quick connect of the heater core. Secure the hose with the two supplied hose clamps. On 1987 1.4 liter engine vehicles, the new formed hose from the parts package will not be required. For these vehicles, the formed end of the existing hose must be cut off and the shortened hose must be connected to the bottom 90 degree quick connect on the heater core. On 1987 vehicles with all engines, the existing hose going to the transmission oil cooler for automatic transmissions or to the straight nipple for manual transmissions must be removed and discarded. A new hose from the parts package must be installed in place of the old hose and connected to the top straight quick connect on the heater core and secured with the two supplied hose clamps. As a final note, if it becomes necessary during the service procedure to remove a quick connect, first pinch both sides of the exposed white locking ring until the leading edge of the tabs can slide under the edge of the quick connect body and push the quick connect off the nipple. Then remove the white nylon locking ring from the nipple and reinsert it in the quick connect body. Before returning the vehicle to the customer, 1985, 1986, and 1987 model year vehicles only must be inspected to ensure that the coolant bottle has the proper cap for pressure venting. In a previous recall, number 425, a revised cap was provided for this purpose. If a non-black cap with a raised stem is present on the engine coolant bottle, it must be replaced. Order a replacement cap, part number 4546111, and arrange to install the new high-domed black cap as soon as possible. If the high dome black cap is already present, it does not need to be replaced and no further service is required. Dealers are urged to give their full support to this important program by serving all involved owners promptly and courteously. For further information regarding vehicle lists, repair parts, service procedures, and claim reporting procedures, refer to the Dealer Safety Recall Notification Letter, number 541.